So good morning everyone. Uh, as I told you yesterday, or, and as was already introduced by uh, Kathleen, I'm working for 18 years now with biochar, starting with Terpreta. And then from 2000 working with biochar replicating Terpreta. And I was lucky to have uh, one uh, among uh, several national projects, one big the uh, European funded project, a so-called cost action. It's, uh, uh, coordination project actually coordinating all the uh, biochar projects in Europe. And I will start with this, explaining most important results, and then later on uh, we will focus on phosphorus, and I will uh, tell you about a recent uh, meta-analysis on the effects of biochar on phosphorus availability in soil, which uh, I submitted. So uh, this is the summary of this uh, cost action. Um, let's say it's the uh, EBRN stands for European Research Network, which is still active in this cost action. Also, Gerald Dunes, Alice Budai, uh, Helmut Gerber, and Claudia Kammer was involved among uh, several others of you, and uh, we are still uh, working together. Uh, and so the project has been terminated in 2016. And here you can see uh, our final publication. It was a special issue of Journal of uh, Environmental Engineering and uh, Landscape Management. Uh, and these 10 um, topics actually, it's a cross section about uh, the biochar activities uh, across Europe. It's a special focus on Europe. So it starts with uh, contamination risk and radiation options, which was discussed yesterday. Gerhard Zoya was actually also involved in the cost action. Um, and then about uh, plant diseases of. Uh, and Raven and uh, Frank to that all, and as Kathleen told you yesterday, there will be a, a webinar about this topic. And then Claudia wrote an article about greenhouse gas emissions. And you can see here always at all that means there were t 10 to 20 uh, other authors, but the uh, space is too short to show it here. It's only the leading authors. And then we did two uh, presentations about the uh, representativeness of the biochar experiments conducted in Europe. I will show you a few slides later on, which are uh, really surprising and also uh, disappointing a little bit. Then uh, one was about the option of biochar for uh, peat replacement. Um, one article was about standardization and legislation, which is also very important. Um, and then one was about the, what do we know about it and what is uh, still required to understand. And the last article is about uh, an application uh, case study uh, based in Poland, but uh, with an up uh, scaling on to whole Europe. In the following, I show you a few slides on the most striking uh, results based on these cooperation and the uh, publications. So you can see here um, uh, among those experiments which was done across Europe so far, what is uh, let's say the most uh, striking application strategies. Uh, on the top left you can see the application um, sort of, uh, application top and most of it, more than 58% were applied to the top soil uh, or they were incorporated. Um, on the right hand top you can see that most um, of the biochar, 77% was pure biochar, although it is known for at least 10 years that you should compost it or you should combine it with uh, some other organic or inorganic amendments. And uh, maybe, probably, even most of the results I will uh, present later on are based on this, uh, on this effect. That it's still obviously among uh, European researchers, uh, it's not well known that you should co-apply biochar with other soil amendments. The concentration was mostly smaller than 1% and the application depth uh, was topsoil. So this is, uh, from this we can uh, learn that mostly biochar was incorporated into 20 centimeter soil depths uh, with a concentration of smaller than 1% and it was applied as pure biochar, which is really dis uh, disappointing due to my experience because uh, whenever I publish something I always pray that please do not apply pure biochar to soil because it's useless, actually apart from carbon sequestration probably. Okay, here you can see an overview on the, the biochar which was applied biochar um, properties. So technology was mostly uh, pyrolysis, which is okay because we have also competing technology which is called uh, uh, gasification retort, uh, retort kiln, but in Germany also hydrothermal carbonization, uh, which is not uh, shown here, and this is good because uh, hydrothermal carbonization 
char is not really viable in most cases based on uh, material properties. Uh, what we can learn here actually is, uh, which is actually clear, at least from my point of view, if you look at uh, pyrolysis chars, most of them, uh, they are alkaline, uh, with an alkaline pH higher than 8, and they have actually a low cation exchange capacity, which means uh, pure biochar added to soil has no capacity to retain uh, nutrients. So it's just there and it's uh, carbon actually, nothing else. So this is also a reason why you need to activate it somehow, like shown by Gerald Dunst, biological activation, composting and so on, to increase the nutrient holding capacity and to add also uh, nutrients. So uh, some effects on plant growth, uh, you can see on the left hand side the above ground effects and on the right hand side below ground effects, so uh, this is quite positive. So some positive effects on above ground biomass, which means yield increase actually. Yeah, but we have also some negative 12% and 50% uh, are neutral, that means there is no really increase, as we have seen from Gerard at least. And uh, some uh, of, uh, I've guessed that most of uh, the explaining factors is here that uh, pure biochar is applied. And uh, below ground effects are similar, 90% no effect, 10% increase. But uh, the good thing is here that we can say there are no detrimental effects of bio, even pure biochar application. So from a legal point of view, we can say, okay, uh, let's legalize it, let's uh, use it, and let um, farmers decide and develop it that they have a uh, beneficial effect out of it. So this is actually also uh, a clear message, I would say. Uh, regarding the nutrient um, availability effects of biochar, the situation is a little bit different. If you look at the, uh, um, now we have uh, plant available water first. You can see here on the left hand side uh, soil moisture content effects and on the right hand side soil water potential. I made this differentiation because, because normally if you measure the gravimetric or volumetric water content in the soil, it does not tell you anything about whether this water is available for plants or not. It depends on the soil texture and the pore size distribution. But nevertheless, you can see in most cases you have a green color, which means um, obviously biochar uh, is very positive for um, the plant available water holding capacity in the soil. So it stores water, which is usable for plants. And in most cases, uh, if you look at the studies, uh, this is also a clear positive effect normally. Uh, the situation is different if we look at the nutrients. Uh, you see on the left hand side uh, effects on nitrogen uh, availability for plants and on the right hand side on phosphorus availability. And for uh, the nitrogen situation is really complicated. So most, almost 50% have negative effects on uh, nitrogen availability in soil. Um, and this means, uh, this is the reason why uh, we need much more studies to, with that and one uh, potential reason is if you add char to the soil, you get also the nitrogen ratio, as explained by Gerald. Uh, and so you have also competition between microorganisms and plants. So this needs much more uh, intensified investigation in order to be able or to identify scenarios where it is positive for um, the nitrogen uptake or the nitrogen availability for plants. But for phosphorus, obviously it looks better. That means uh, almost 50% there was a positive effect uh, on plant available phosphorus. And this was the reason why I said, okay, uh, this is for the European case, and now I go uh, into that more depth and I use uh, available literature to look whether on a global scale uh, this can be corroborated or not, because it's easier than for nitrogen. And on, if you are lucky, you do not need additional experimentation because uh, there is enough literature. So now we come to the meta analysis. You have seen yesterday also some. Uh, results of meta-analysis, but uh, I, I guess that some of you, they are not really familiar with what is meant by meta-analysis and how it works. So from a scientific point of view, meta-analysis is a quantitative approach for systematically combining results of previous research to arrive at conclusions about the body of research. What does this mean? You see, quantitative is it not, we do not look at the numbers and say, oh, this is positive or negative, so we are using really the available numbers, which are scientifically uh, based, based on scientific results. Systematic, that means we need an approved methodological approach, which I will show you in a minute. 
uh, combining is putting together uh, the several studies and previous research. Uh, it is already done, so we do not need new experimentation. Also, I will explain in a minute why uh, we do not need uh, additional experimentation to that. And from this um, methodological approach, we can create new knowledge, namely whether uh, biogen has a systematic effect on particular phosphorus in this case. So if you look at published uh, literature, and uh, as a scientist, I mean with published literature, nothing which I can read in the built Zeitung, uh, but only in a peer reviewed scientific literature. And uh, the Bible of researchers with respect to this is the so called Easy Web of Science core database. Uh, you can Google it, but normally you have access to it only if you are uh, a member of an academic institution. But if you go to a university in a library, probably you have also access to that. So, and if you enter that biochar as a title in this database, uh, this morning I found uh, 40,000. Uh, 40, 1,028 articles. So that means, in the meantime, uh, even for me as a, a researcher, it's very hard to, to, to keep an overview on published results of biochar. It's too much, I cannot read everything. And this is the reason why if you start with a topic like the biochar effect on uh, phosphorus availability, you can say, okay, I do, rather than starting reading 4,000 articles, I look, um, if someone has summarized it, like refuse, we have 159 refuse now with uh, the title Biochar, and we have already 23 meta analysis. So, the method I'm using now, I'm explaining to you now. So, this is huge, and uh, normally, if you are lucky uh, to your topic, there is also meta analysis. And uh, I would always start with this because uh, other researchers have investigated or invested much work to summarize uh, quantitatively uh, individual studies. And of course, the output of such meta-analysis uh, is much higher. Of course, there are also disadvantages, which we can discuss in the following of a meta-analysis. But from my point of view, there are also huge advantages. And this is the reason why um, I, I use this method now for this topic. Uh, OK, you can see on the, on the bottom uh, the distribution of this um, 4,028 large articles, you can see there is still an exponential increase. And of course, the last column, 2018, is smaller because we are now in June, which is half of the year, and it's still, it will, of course, increase by the end of the year. What else you can see here that the total number uh, of biochar publications are past now 1,000 per year. So they are at three articles every day, but I checked it the last three days, there were, uh, there were new. Uh, no new ones, but in general we have three articles, by new biochar articles per day now. Okay, so what we did is we, we checked, okay, of course, it needs, it needs a lot of time to do that. That means I cannot uh, present now results up to today because uh, it was done last year, this study. So we checked uh, a result from 1980 to 2016. We entered phosphorus and available uh, and biochar as title and got uh, nearly 200 articles out of that. And then you have to download these articles, you have to read them, and you have to decide or to select uh, other criteria. And our criteria are the following study is a control measurement uh, of undermanded soil. That means you need always to compare um, the phosphorus availability in a treatment with biochar and without biochar on the same soil under the same conditions. Uh, if this is not uh, in there, you have to reject the article. And the same was uh, true for studies using the same peak extraction methods for control and amended soil, of course, because otherwise you cannot compare those. No additional peak fertilizer applied studies incorporating biochar into the soil and biochar produced by paralysis. So, and if applying those arguments, uh, 25 studies were remaining with a total of 108 treatments, which is quite good to undertake this uh, meta-analysis. How does it work? We uh, calculated a so-called response ratio, which is this RR. It is very simple. Uh, it's actually the plant-available phosphorus on the treatment with biochar divided by the same uh, amounts without biochar. So it's the biochar effect and it's a ratio. Um, yeah, and then uh, the second uh, formula is the so-called confidence interval. It's, let's uh, say it's the 95% confidence interval and it's like a 5% error probability. That means, uh, as you can see on the right-hand side, uh, it's an example how, how it works. 
you see on the x-axis this response ratio, and if it is 1, that means there is no effect. If it's smaller than 1, that means if it's left-hand side of the 1, it's a negative Bulger effect, or it would be a negative Bulger effect, and if it's bigger than 1, then it's a positive Bulger effect. Uh, and it means 95% confidence in the wall is this, this bar, this arrow bar you can see here. And uh, the trick is you look just at the size of this arrow bar, uh, and if it touches the one, the, the effect is not significant because you have higher than this 5% error probability. And if it's on the right hand side, the effects are significant. So it's quite straightforward, I would say, if you understand how it's plotted. Uh, then on the right hand side you can see different treatments, so there are uh, different possibilities how to evaluate it. Uh, and the numbers in, the, in brackets, this is let's say the, the number of observations for this specific treatment here. Okay, and then in addition you can uh, do a different um, statistical things. For instance, you can uh, um, introduce a weighing. Normally, uh, weighing was, uh, is done with uh, standard errors of the experiments. We decided not to weigh anything, because normally, uh, if you do fit experiments, you have a lower number of repetitions than the spot experiments. But due to my personal point of view, fit experiments are much more valuable than pot experiments, because they are much more real. Uh, and to give them the same weight, we, we did, uh, did not weigh the, um, the, uh, like the result, our results. Okay, now you see this, uh, in the following slides, you just see uh, such uh, evaluations uh, and with different varieties. Um, okay, here you see uh, the biochability as a function of biochar feedstock. So, in the way how I explained, I explained to you, and you can clearly see that uh, all the uh, effects are bigger than one. That means there is a clear positive uh, effect of biochar on plant pay, pay availability. On the top, you see the overall effect with um, 108 observations. So, it's about 3 point something uh, significant. And that means uh, if you have, if you add biochar to the soil, the phosphorus availability is by a factor of three, or 300%, three times higher than the same treatment without biochar. This is a clear effect. And if we differentiate the different uh, feedstocks, you can see um, for the animal waste, it's the highest. Bio waste is a little bit lower and crop waste is used, but it's still uh, higher than factor of three. And we have two non-significant uh, feedstocks. This is wastewater sludge and wood. For wastewater sludge, actually the effect is the highest with seven, but also the variation is highest. But if you look at the number of uh, repetitions, uh, there were only four uh, cases reported, so the variation is very high. Uh, but uh, to be honest, I would expect from a biochar from wastewater sludge the highest effect because, of course, there's a lot of phosphorus inside. But uh, with this feedstock, you would need more uh, experimental uh, investigations to unambiguously show that there is a significant positive effect. And for wood, we have also uh, an effect higher than one, you can see, but uh, also this is not significant, it's slightly higher than one, and a possible explanation for that is that wood has no phosphorus. So one of the biggest effects of biochar is also that it adds uh, particle phosphorus to uh, the soil. But to look if other uh, factors like the uh, phosphorus from the feedstock adds to higher plant available phosphorus, we did some uh, different um, investigations. Here you can see um, the application amount of biochar, whether this has an effect or not. And you can see here as well all uh, effects are higher than one, much higher than one. But application amounts smaller than 10 tons per hectare at the second line uh, is not significant. That means with respect to biochar application to soil, you need at least 10 tons per hectare in order to uh, significantly increase the plant available phosphorus content. But there, uh, yeah, if to further evaluate whether there is a clear um, amount effect, you can see here a correlation of the logarithm of this um, response ratio just to squeeze the, the y scale a little bit and there's a clear positive correlation, very significant um, with respect to the amount. That means the more bijar you add, the higher is uh, the amount available phosphorus. It's a clear positive effect. 
Uh, also, the variation can be only explained 14%. So it's a huge variation, and there must be some something else than only the uh, biochar amount um, having an effect of plant available phosphorus in soil. Uh, okay, the next step is to find out whether there is an optimum biochar production temperature uh, for phosphorus availability. Uh, you can see here again, everything is positive, very high response ratios, but at, uh, for biochars at very high temperature, higher than 600 degrees, uh, the effect is not significant anymore. So the message here is we should produce biochar smaller than 600 degrees in order to have a beneficial effect for uh, phosphorus. Again here, uh, we checked it with a, a correlation analysis, which you can see here, and again, it is, it is significantly um, negative, as you can see. But if you look at the points, uh, I guess that the, the point at the right hand, the green one for bio waste, at more than 1,000 degrees, uh, it's skewing a little bit this correlation, but if you look at the cloud of the left points, uh, due to my opinion, there is no really uh, a correlation. So every biochar is actually uh, helpful for increasing plant available phosphorus. Then we investigated whether pH has an effect. Uh, the pH of um, the biochar, and you can see here uh, that the highest effect is at uh, pH smaller than 6.5, but also others uh, have a positive effect on plant available P, but very alkaline uh, chars, higher than 7.5, they have no significant effect. And the last point is the experimental duration. Uh, you can see here uh, it is divided uh, smaller than one month, one to three months, three to six, and higher to six months. Um, and there is no effect. That means it's no immediate effect but, uh, if you apply biochar to soil, uh, this effect on plant available phosphorus uh, is at least medium term, smaller, higher than six months, which is very good, contrary to the pH effect. So, uh, summarizing um, the results from the meta-analysis on a global scale demonstrate that biochar has the potential to enhance plant available phosphorus uh, in amended soils and could be a promising replacement for pea fertilizer. And actually this is also the, the most promising effect apart from the water holding capacity I have seen for biochar. So I would say this uh, topic um, is hot and it uh, can unambiguously be shown uh, based on published literature. Biochar produced from crop agricultural animal residues showed the highest effect, uh, as I have showed you, uh, as well as biochar produced at low, rather low production temperature. And it should be applied at least at 10 tons per hectare to have this uh, effect of phosphorus availability. Thank you very much. <laughs>
Is there any indication that biochar binds P? I don't think so. Because biochar, biochar access, if, if you have pure biochar, it has, uh, okay, it has pores. And if water goes into the pores, some phosphorus or nitrate will go in there. Um, but it's maybe 10, 20%. But uh, this phosphorus is probably plantable, but there is, no, uh, there is no effect where phosphorus binds to char, so it is not plantable anymore. Otherwise, I mean, we have seen all those results, otherwise the results would be different. And to be honest, I mean, I have seen uh, also several others make analysis like yesterday and so on. But if you look at the numbers, three, five, seven, I have not, not, none seen such high numbers with a response ratio. A response ratio of seven means uh, biochar increases the, plant, the available fossils by a factor of seven compared to the same treatment without biochar. So, if you would say then that P binds phosphorus, uh, these data show the opposite. It makes phosphorus available somehow. And one effect is there is, of course, phosphorus there. Of course, this is plant available. And the second one is the pH effect. The third, I mean, there is, of course, a variation. I've seen in the correlation. There are other factors which you cannot deal with this meta-analysis. Uh, but the effects, they are at least clear. And it's Apart from the water, the clear thing I have seen. For nitrogen, it's completely different. And it's the reason why I, I stuck to the phosphorus, because I think it's, it's easy and it's straightforward. So if, if you have an idea how it, uh, or if you have had charts where the uh, plant available phosphorus was decreased, probably can talk about it, about that, which effects you have there and so on. But in most of the published literature, you find the opposite. There is no uh, stacking or no binding of phosphorus uh, to char. And it's a clear message due to the results I showed you. Do you agree with that? my one figure by 50% uh, detrimental effects on nitrogen. Um, so I think for nitrogen we need much more investigations and much uh, closer looks to that because I think with nitrogen there are a lot of competing effects also. I cannot tell you. Uh, my personal experience is that uh, at least I have no um, I have no negative effects on nitrate leaching with biochar, but I have also no positive, no clear positive effects. But Claudia has the opposite, so, uh, but I think uh, there is no uh, generalization to that. With respect to, to nitrate, um, we need more the investigations. The problem I have is that we uh, sell biochar to our politicians to say uh, we uh, can prevent the leaching effect. <laughs> of, of well, to be honest, uh, 
Susanne, I would not at this moment, I would not sign a document uh, saying that because I'm a scientist. I need a proof of a concept, but probably Claudia and uh, Gerald could sign it right now. Uh, and as I told you uh, right now, I, I think the, the results of Gerard with this high uh, solid matter contents and uh, C2N ratio, they are really worth publishing immediately. And then you can say this is our first evidence that what you think is wrong. So but No, you can promote. No, no, no. I would say for the politicians, they, would under, they won't understand anyway our scientific things. So we need anyway people like you to, to translate what we did as scientists into a language which they can understand. Uh, and um, but for the nitrate, I mean, I have I've also had a look at the uh, easy website uh, in the preparation for this talk, and there are already 43 publications uh, in the title culture and nitrate. So that means if there is a, a student uh, in your group needing, uh, they, they could do a meta-analysis like I did for the topic uh, nitrogen leaching and biochar. And then probably get a clear picture, I don't know. But I have no time to do it, so it means uh, you need half a year to do something like that. Claudia, didn't you say that? Um, just to add to that, before I pose my question on phosphorus again, um, we just did a meta-analysis which was on NGO emissions and we just included what we found uh, uh, on the nitrate uh, side of that, and there's an uh, overall reduction of 120% in fishing when this classical thing of using the pure, not treated biochar in mm. some amounts was used in the yeah. market. So yeah, that's, that's reasonable. Yeah, and then just my question uh, for the phosphorus um, I'm just asking the uh, Avocados Diabolus question here why do you apply a phosphorus fertilizer? When you, I mean, what you obviously do is um, all these biochars which were, which have some phosphorus in them from animal manure and so on, they have a positive effect. The whole biochar just a bit. Mm -hmm. So why wouldn't you just add phosphorus fertilizer? And you have um, maybe a much more um, yeah, you know, reliable effect. So that's just. We discussed, we discussed this a lot, but the problem is, uh, as the, the main topic is, I wanted to know what's the effect of the biochar. If I add also phosphorus fertilizer, I have two effects which I cannot no, really no, separate. Uh, wrong question. My question was about, I mean, it was just a kind of provoking question. Mm -hmm. If I, I as a kind of farmer would have the opportunity to put my phosphorus there by having a biochar or having a triple superphosphate. And I would probably go for the triple superphosphate. Yeah, of course, this is what farmers do, but uh, I think we uh, also should be aware that this is a limited resource and we are dependent on the price they put. So I think if I go farm and have had the chance to have an own material, which would uh, give me the chance in case I need to reduce uh, the, the external phosphorus. Uh, so it's a go, it's just an, an idea. Um, yeah. Just another question, the effect size, it was the, just the measurable plant weight of phosphorus and not the increase in plant growth or something. No, plant growth is, uh, is out of scope here. So, maybe I misunderstood this, you know, the plant available phosphorus that you're talking about, is it phosphorus in the soil as well as the phosphorus that's been added in the biochar? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. We cannot separate. This is the reason why most of the chars, I guess, the highest effect is probably really the phosphorus which is in a char. You have seen from the, the different sources. I mean, you would has no phosphorus. It had, it had a, a lower. Uh, but the, the problem is with this type of analysis, uh, you, you cannot differentiate because there are there are two varieties then. So we have only one variety, which is response ratio with with biochar divided by without biochar. So this is our effect biochar, but if the biochar has uh, also phosphorus, this is a second variable. Uh, and you, you cannot differentiate it with this type of analysis, it's not possible. Do we, do we have an opinion on biochar's ability to make the phosphorus that's already in the minerals in the soil plant available? Does this tell us anything about that question? Uh, yes, I mean, if you go back to this wood thing, I have a higher effect than one, but it's of course not factor of three, it's 1.3 something, and the effect is not significant because uh, so there's a slight effect, but it's not uh, something we would say uh, this is worth doing it. Mm. You show me that most researchers have done uh, like six months or less, or maybe up to one year, is it that 
research. Oh, I have to go back. I cannot tell. I can't remember the numbers, but you can see it yourself. Uh, Fourteen. No, the most of them have been done with between three and six months, and I guess most of them are pot experiments. First, my question is: uh, Is there been any research from five, ten, fifteen years? Periods? No. Should there be? Yes, of course. With everything, with everything. But the problem is, I had also three. A uh, three years project with feed experiments, with big ones, investing a lot of money, half a million euro and so on. But at least in Germany it's not possible to get additional money for a running experiment. So you need always something new. And uh, I had two of them. That means for the first experiment uh, I co-financed this while having a second one. And then when the second one terminated together with Helmut, uh, I was so tired saying, oh, okay, I, I won't do it. Uh, we tried this, this Bonares project where they have uh, really a long term um, a series, but uh, it was obviously not uh, so important for them to give us money to run, to continue our experiments the next 10 years. But they are still there. I mean, if you are interested in taking and having capacities to taking samples, uh, let's say for a long term biotrophy experiment, just contact me and uh, I can show you the place and help you sampling there. Because the biotrophy, of course, is still there and the uh, experiment obviously is ongoing. Yeah, please. I believe your early work was largely with terapeutic soils. Yes. And a big difference, maybe, large accumulation of fish bones and other bones. Yes. Can you talk about your experience with terra predator related to this new work? Uh, yes. Uh, I mean, of course, um, we did a lot of uh, investigations based on molecular markers, finding out what they exactly did. And what they exactly did is they applied about uh, 50 tons per hectare of uh, charred residues, which we now call biochar. Uh, in addition, uh, 15 tons of phosphorus uh, and 12 tons of nitrogen based on bones, uh, ex human excrements um, and fish bones and so on. And this was uh, in the soil is still, I mean the numbers I told you they are still there today. I mean the soils are 2000 years old, that might be in, in the past they had 500 tons of char and so on. We do not know because it's gone, but it's still there and it's still sustainable and it's still uh, a great thing. Uh, to be honest, uh, the, the, the big um, discrepancy we find, because also uh, with the second uh, field experiment in, a, in northern Germany we did, it was a, in a region where we also find in a sandy soil our so-called Nordic dark earth, which is a terpene analog one in central Germany or central Europe, with similar properties, high soil and metal contents, high biochar contents, High phosphorus nitrogen, the only difference is they use the animal excrements, but not human excrements at the same region. And five kilometers away, we did this uh, experiment with our optimized biochar substrates and so on. Uh, and due to my experience, it works very well in the first year. And then it declines if we apply it uh, high amounts once. And this is a discrepancy I cannot explain uh, up to now, and this needs uh, certainly further uh, investigations. Uh, this is my personal experience. And of course, you could now go to, let's say, a root application, small amounts every year and so on. Uh, but this is also uh, probably a topic which should be intensified in the future. But due to my experiments, just one time applying 40 tons of char together with compost and so on, optimized nutrients, uh, it does not, also from the chemical characterization, it's similar to Terrapreta, but uh, from the plant um, growth. Uh, potential, it's not identical to Terpeter, there's something still missing. Probably on the microbial side, okay. I don't know. One more, maybe? Mm -hmm. I don't know if there is a, a, a quite close range of different uh, soil, phosphorus, availability, extraction methods that are studying the, the different fractions of the phosphorus. Yes. Uh, could, could you find differences or could you standardize for this somehow? Um, no, we did not do that, uh, but plant available P, I think it's whether you use Gray or Olsen, it's not so different, I would say. At least not with respect to this one. I mean, uh, most of the effects were still significant, uh, and uh, I would say it's much more important to look at uh, environmental conditions and so on, and the type of chart they added, like this one. Uh, yes. Okay, thank you very much. Fair enough.